What's up guys? It's time for some arena domination after a couple days of silence. Every time that I do this, <laughs> I get so many messages and I have done this so many times before, so it's okay guys, don't I'm I'm not quitting the game or anything like that. Just been having too much fun in the summer. Actually, one thing that we're planning right now, this is kind of very Nordic or Scandinavian thing. Probably you American people have not heard about this unless you have like Swedish cousins or something like that. But one thing that we're talking about a lot right now is something called um, Rapujuhlat. I don't know what is it, Grafest in Swedish, I think, pretty sure. But it's Basically, at this time of year, it's very traditional in Nordic countries that you will basically eat um, what, what 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 even is it in English? Not crabs, but the small ones, like tiny lobsters. Oh wait, crawfish, crawfish. That's what I mean. You will eat crawfish, and that will like be the main main food, and it's kind of a traditional thing that people do in the end of the summer and we're talking a, a lot about it like when are we helping it and who's coming to it and so on okay Angkor and UDK we're definitely gonna go with uh, I mean Angkor and Krixia and Sifi we're definitely gonna go with Angora, UDK and Rotos if he lets us and we don't need UDK so we're good Mm. Yeah, I don't really need to pick UDK though. I might do it because there's a good chance that he might. Let's go. Let's go for Datsus. He might go for the Angora band too. So maybe I'll still pick UDK. Anyway, that's what's going on with me. Not, nothing other than that. I guess we got some special stuff coming in raid this week, but I haven't even double checked if we can talk about it right now. So I'm. I'm gonna keep my mouth shut. I think they might have already released it. Anyway, that's coming some stuff this week. That's that's all you need to know. Okay, this is very meta team. Uh, I guess we'll go with the Wukong. I don't think I should pick the UDK here. The one thing that I don't like here is that it's so easy for him to rock the Lazarus lockout with killing Wukong all the time. But if if we can get some abilities on, on him, then it would be great. He is pretty fast now. He might even if Sifi is his fastest champion and not um, uh, not Krixia. And often they build actually Krixia as their fastest champion, so we'll see about that. But if Sifi is the fastest and he doesn't open with A1, we're gonna cut in with Wukong. Okay. No, I guess not. I guess he has very fast Krixia in that case. But okay, <laughs> she got Polymorph, so it does the same deal. Now we could go for a Polymorph on Ankara, or we could maybe try to steal some Stone Skin. I don't know if I want to gamble with it or not, but I think we'll go for the Stone Skin steal. Oh, nice. We got both of the Stone Skin. He doesn't get attack buff from uh, Lazarus passive. And he lost that defense buff from Harima, so this is gonna make him not happy. I think the Narciss is still... I think he got locked out. So he, he was before Datsus in Team Order, who I think proc the Polymorph. So we couldn't use his abilities anyway, yeah. It's kind of tricky when he has both Marius and... Sifi, so he still has double reviver. Killing Sifi is not gonna cut it. But yeah, we can see that he probably... The Sifi is very, very squeezy, so... He probably has insane speed on both Sifi and Krixia. My Wukong is 350 speed, or I think 355 or something like that. And in... Which one should I even do? And in supersonic set, so I'm kind of surprised that he didn't cut in before City. Okay, maybe we should risk it here and see if we get a weak hit or not. Okay, nice. 
the Lazarus would have gone before Dutchess, but the sheep form has was it like 50 speed or 150 speed? I think 150. So it's way slower, and because of that, we got the whale up. Otherwise, it would have killed the Dutchess before it got the turn. But we're still waiting for the cooldowns. Nice. But I, I, I think the Lazarus can proc the passive anyway, so I think Narsus is gonna get locked out before he gets a turn. No? Should I go for A1? I think we'll go for A1 actually. Even if we don't get sun, maybe we can reduce the turn meter. Ah, wicked. Okay, we're, we're locked out again. It's so hard to fight against this type of teams. We almost made it. If, if my Narcissus was just slightly faster, and my Narcissus is very fast, but if he was slightly faster, then he would have gotten his turn before Lazarus. It was very close. And if he did, we would have killed it. But I, I don't think we can make it anymore. But actually, where should I use the revive? I don't know if I should revive the Dutchess or not. I think Marius is just going to decimate it. Uh, let, let's go for the revival. I think he might kill my Ankara too, so better get the Dutchess passive. Okay, this time we didn't weak it. I think we still have the turn meter reduction left on the A1, the Evil Eye Mastery proc, because I don't think we got it there because of the Polymorph. I think we can go even for a third A1 on the Lazarus. What? Ankara critted for 17k. No, nobody saw that coming. My Ankara doesn't have like high damage. <laughs> what? Okay, we, we have to double check what her attack and crit damage is now, but it's not high, so. Didn't see that one coming. Under 32 crit damage and 2900 attack. But apparently, <laughs> apparently you can do 17k on A1. I mean, he didn't have any buffs or anything like that, to, to be fair. Okay, great start. <laughs> Here we go. Here's a funny trivia about Crawfish. I don't know if this applies to United States or a Asia and so on, but it does apply to other countries in Europe as well. So Crawfish is kind of traditional old food, old food in Europe, but it used to be considered like a peasant food and very like low quality food that you know the peasants peasants eat eat those bugs from like swamps and not like a, a proper food but i can't recall exactly but somewhere in the middle ages or like not too long ago it kind of switched up and it became like noble food and expensive food instead of cheap one i know in us it's way cheaper than it is here i guess you do the same thing that, that people do in asia that you you grow like rice fields and you also, you also grow crawfish in the rice fields. It's not a thing here, though. But yeah, it's not super expensive. I think it's, uh, I mean, it is super expensive, but depends on your level. But for your average person, crawfish is not something that you eat normally. And I think it has something to do with, like, you know, Swedish kings, but I forget the, forget the details about why you you held the um, like the crawfish um, like party, but something to do with them, I'm pretty sure. And it's always always this time of year. I remember I saw this. Okay, it's so bad that I don't remember the names because you know, I think Sweden has like like maybe like a dozen kings with the same name and. 
they are always have the same number. Is it like uh, not the number, but different number? I think it's it's like Carle Gustav, something like that. And in in history, of course, in like um, in like maybe like thirteenth uh, grade, like some advanced history course, we um, we watched like not a documentary, but like a documentary TV show. I think it was like twelve episodes or something like that about the Swedish king and queen, or I think the queen was like from, I want to say Norway, and it was like you know based on actual historical events. Okay, wait. I need to pick it. I think this is gonna be... Um, maybe Xena battle. But basically the entire point of the documentary, and this actually happened in real life, I think basically they were like the queen and queen of Sweden, and in those days, you know, the kings and queens of different countries, they always gave the girls away to like other countries' kings or something like that. It used to be a practice in Europe at least, I don't know about other places. And it took them like 15 years or whatever to, you know, first time get into bed and make a children. And the entire TV show about, was about, like, you know, their relationships and when are they gonna make a baby? And like their parents really wanted a baby and so on. And they had like um, been married for like many years and not spoken to each other or something like that. And apparently that's like, you know, based on real life uh, events. Maybe some Swedish guy knows what I'm talking about. Anyway. I don't think that's where the craft is uh, party comes from, but I think both of them come from Sweden. I don't know why. Maybe maybe this is just Finnish jealousy, but people tend to know Sweden a lot more than they know about Finland. And I don't think I mean Sweden is a bigger country, but it's not that much bigger country than Finland. I don't know why people always know know them, but not us. Probably has to do, I guess, with history that. Sweden conquered most of the Europe at some point, I guess. They were almost like England, but not quite as grand. I mean, they were bigger at that time, but they didn't they didn't conquer the entire world. So we don't have a reviver here. And clearly Narsus is not going to do anything in this battle. But his team is not very tanky. I think we can kill it with Xena. And he's avoiding using the CV turn meter boost. I think we're going to open with the A2 and not the A3. If we get the double kill on the A3, we're going to reset the cooldown. If he does the CV turn meter boost right now, that would be a mistake. I would definitely kill... Okay, not doing it. I would definitely kill the um, Ronda, but maybe both of them. Can we? Okay, let's. No, no, let's hit Xena. Then, then we can get double kill on the Nogros with the Xena A3. Yeah. Okay, if my Necrot can like tank one more hit, I think we I think it's still winnable. As long as my Necrot can survive for a little bit. He's thinking about it every time. Does he want to do the 10 meter boost or not? Ah. Fuck. Oh, it's so close. Can we do it? No, we only got one kill. I think that's it. I think we lost. We, we, need, we need a kill on both of the Nukers. Okay. We still have immunity. Can we? Wait, no, okay, we don't have abilities, okay. He broke the A1 again. He, he broke it twice in the battle. Okay. 
I mean, you know, he picked UDK and Hariman. He knew that I wanted to pick Rodos and I don't have other Nougars. It's the same thing that I complain on every video 15 times, so happens. Maybe I should have gone with Stalus, maybe it would have been slightly tankier and since he was kind of holding on the CV turn meter boost and we didn't get the attack buff, maybe Stalus damage would have been enough to end that battle. Since the CV was very squishy, it, not, it was not like a super tanky one. But yeah, I think I'm still gonna be running a lot of Wukong today. It was kind of the theme of the last video, but I think for now Wukong is is kind of good when I have it in polymorph and in accuracy, so I think we're gonna do it. In those battles where I would pick Wukong, I could pick Rodos too, so I don't even need both of them. Okay, it's kind of similar team. Well, no. Sifi and Harima is in almost every battle, to be fair, so... It's not that unique. Only people that might not pick it is those people with very bad accounts or those people that run like five different mythical champions. Anyway, what do we want to do here? I guess we I guess we just have to go with Salos and Xena. There's no other options. He has all of my Nougars. Maybe I could have gone with Heligat since I had the UDK. Maybe maybe that was a mistake. It's not like he's gonna ban the UDK in, in this battle. Okay, we're gonna ban the Galatir, of course. But yeah, actually I should have gone with Heligat. That would have been smarter. Plus my Heligas would have been in Stone Skin and I don't have 4P Stone Skin on Staltus. I would say that that's one thing that you really want to think about on your account. That you often want to, if you have many Nukers, you kind of want to look at who can actually build 4P Stone Skin. And those are often, you know, relevant enough to affect what you would use as your main Nukers. Because if you can get it or not, it's going to make a massive difference. Nice. I don't think that's going to do anything because Rodos isn't going to be able to use his abilities anyway. Not right off the bat with the UDK. <laughs> but we kind of... Oh, he even got removed from CV passive. But we kind of showed him what's what, I guess. What? Why is he thinking? He shouldn't use the boost right now. Okay. It, my Xena would have cut into the Harima if he... Did the CV turn meter boost. Are we gonna move before the... Wait. If I don't revive Xena, he's gonna do the turn meter boost. So we have to go for Xena. I can't even think about. Saltos, and on the other hand, I guess we can try to go for Fierce now that... He's afraid to, <laughs> afraid to boost on CV. Maybe we can proc some of it. The, the issue is that with, uh, without attack buff, I don't think we have enough damage to kill anybody right now. Yeah. I 
and he can definitely kill Xena with the A3. Oh, he got feared on Noras, it's nice. Oh, wait, <laughs> why did he do it now? Now we cut in and now it's good. Now we get at least double kill and we reset the cooldown. I think we should just go for A1 because he shouldn't have... Oh, nice. He shouldn't have any of the abilities on Narsus yet. Not that, not that we really needed the cooldown reset on Xena anyway, because she's gonna do the A3 anyway. Okay. And we need a revive. I guess now he doesn't need to worry about Xena passive when it's on cooldown. Wait, does he have the AoE nuke right now? I think he has it. That, that was a mistake. I think he has it this time. Well, I, I guess it doesn't matter. Yeah. We we had the shield anyway. Two battles was pretty much the same team from both of them. And of course we lost both. Don't, don't mind my wandering gaze, I'm just browsing the internet, looking at DMs and about to open the reddit. What? Elite Revive? Okay, I haven't even seen this before. We need to look at this. What? Is this a new thing? What? Varium is just straight up sailing champions. I haven't been following this stuff. I didn't even know about this. What? Okay, Mikage and Narthus. Yeah, let's go with that. Look, look at this. Wait. No, <laughs> don't don't leave the battle. Okay, we're good. So, um, elite revival pass. Elite revival revival pass unlocks an extra set of revival pass rewards, including a chance to get powerful legendary champion when you're at the end oh i think i have actually heard about this before i think this is for like new players or people that quit the game and came back i guess everybody doesn't get this option i have never seen it but now that i think about it i heard about this long time ago maybe not with those rewards but the fact that they were setting a champion in it not that i care i mean they obviously wouldn't put good champions on this in the first place and it wouldn't break the balance in PvP. I mean, how could it anyway? Yeah, he still has one support pick left and I wanted to get a reviver. I'm not super keen on picking Rotos at this point. But yeah, what? Varium is selling champions. I totally forgot about that. Anyway, who do we want to ban in this battle? I feel like we need to ban one of the lockouts. But which one? I, I guess we'll go with the Galatir. I'm not running my Mika gain stone skin anymore, so if I went for the Warlord ban, I would have still still been locked out by the Galater. Like guaranteed or unless I broke the polymorph, but I wouldn't have had the stone skin protection. Should we open with the A3? I don't think it's gonna do much, but I guess we should. Oh, no reaction, Brox. Interesting. 
If I had strong hookers here, the Ankara could have easily died to that ally attack. I don't know how fast we want to change form of the Mikage, but I guess we're locked out so we don't have options. Otherwise I probably would have done the A2 so that we don't get any feeble from his counterattack and maybe we could reduce the duration of the boss. Okay, please don't give me any feeble. Okay, of course, it's like 55% chance and of course he got on both of the nukers and he didn't get polymorphed. Of course. Okay, we got one polymorph, but we kind of needed need more on Marius than Arima. Okay, Stalos didn't get it this time. We can at least do something, but we, do, we don't have enough damage to one-shot the Marius. Wait, do we even have... I don't think we even have the cooldowns back, to be fair. Yeah. <laughs> Never mind that. Wait, I have to double check. Do I have my stream music on? Oh, it's on. Fuck. I guess we'll just leave it on at this point. I think it would be kind of weird if I put it off at this point. Like, on these videos I usually put the music like in post-production, after I have actually made the video. But on live stream, I of course have it on the entire time. But it's too late to turn it off at this point and <laughs> then put music on the rest of the video. I kind of, you know, change the music a little bit, it's the same songs mostly, but different videos have different music, but livestream always has the same songs. Th though it has like, it basically has all of my songs on rotation, so it has much bigger variance, I guess, but yeah, no way, no way we can beat this guy, N not even close, not even remotely close. I don't think even with good RNG, and if we proc polymorph on the nukers, I don't think we could ever beat like the champions that he has. We're still gonna get locked out and And we have the bad nukers in, in this battle, or one bad nuker. If I had Narcissus and Ankara or Rotos and Narciss in this battle, then it would be doable but very hard, but now it kind of feels impossible to win. And if we kill the Harima every now and then, it's just gonna increase his damage because he can revive it with cooldowns from Ankara. Okay, three losses in row. Wait, that was third one? Okay, yeah, three. Every team has Harima. Well, even the win had Harima. <laughs> For those people telling to me that Harima isn't that OP, literally every single person we ever meet has Harima and, and usually CV2, but th this guy didn't have it. When is the next next um, event for 2x 
mythical shards coming up, I'm ready to open my wallet plarium. <laughs> You're making me feel very desperate at this point. Then again, we have fusions coming up soon, so... You never know what we get. I feel like surely they're gonna do a mythic fusion at some point. And if I had to guess, maybe like... Maybe at the end of the year, maybe like December. Or at the start of like... on, on In the next month, maybe they could consider doing it. I've seen a lot of people saying that they would never do a mythic fu fusion, but think about it this way. If they do a mythic fusion, that means that they also dilute the pool and make it harder for people like whales and everybody else to get the other good champions. So my bet is that they are definitely going to do mythic fusion. Maybe it's only something that they will do once a year or very rarely, but I kind of feel like they're totally going to do one. Okay, speed team. But we got all of the nukers available. Should I just go with Rotos and UDK? It's not like he's gonna really want to... I mean, Rotos and Narsus. It's not like he wants to pick UDK in a speed team. He could pick it, but... I think he wants to pick something like Lockout at this point. I would expect like a lockout. Okay, he already got the Siegfried. I'm gonna Siegfried and I guess maybe charge it as the last one. Could be anything. I guess we could even go with the UDK. I want to pick UDK or Wukong. I think Wukong could be interesting here too since he doesn't have. Um, Wait, should I just go with both of them? Instead of a reviver. But he has the ally attack. I don't know about that. This is kind of a tough choice. The Zeke from this is gonna hit so insanely hard. I don't know if I really want to go without UDK, but okay, let, let's go with Tratsus. Maybe the Wukong can cut, it, cut in at some point. Probably not instantly, because he's running arbitrary with uh, intimidating presence, so he's probably very fast. Oh, interesting. We could totally just go for the... Ar We're definitely gonna go for the Arbiter ban. I have Rotos in stone skin. He can get stunned or like one shot by him. Ronda, and he doesn't have any lockout or anything like that, so we're definitely gonna get some turns. I think this is doable. I think Rodos should be able to do this battle. He'll probably open with the uh, Ronda Nook on maybe Narsus instead of Ugon, since I have revive anyway. Oh, and we can polymorph where we want, and we can put. Oh, we, we can put block bus debuff on them, except we were unlucky and we didn't get it on Siegfried. That was the one champion that we wanted it on, but okay. We got the stone skin. Maybe I should have opened with the A2, but it could have gone worse. Oh wait, Rotos is gonna go before Ronda. Maybe, yeah, maybe I shouldn't have... I guess I don't think it matters actually, but yeah, maybe I should have opened with the A2. Anyway, we're, we're good. <laughs> Damn, he hit the noob on the reaction. My Narsus still had not taken a turn. And now, if we don't weak it, we can get rid of the... Okay, we weak it. We could have gotten rid of the... Block damage fast, but okay, we we don't really want to kill the 
um, the um, what's his name? Mika get fast here. I, I hit her with the A1. Maybe we could have locked her out, but I guess it doesn't matter. But I didn't want to kill her. We would have broke the Seek from passive. But if we got the Polymorph on Wukong, oh, okay, nice. If we got the Polymorph, then we could have gotten rid of the passive or that block damage instantly. Okay, finally a win. I feel like I need to get the Fugong even faster than he is, but he is kind of annoying to the enemy teams. Not quite the same as Lockout, but sometimes he does the same job. Okay, so we're at 351 with... Oh yeah, I have stuff that I haven't sold. Um, I need to close it from here actually because... Uh, okay, fuck. If I don't close it properly, I, these are not going to show up as a new and I'm not instantly going to sell them, but yeah, there's a lot of room to glip Wukong. I'm kind of um, not super clean on speed clipping everything, but maybe I could speed clip the triple speed on the shield and the helmet. Not going to do it on the, on the chest and love store. But yeah, people are fast today. I thought I would be kind of fast now, but not even remotely close enough. I just went to shower before this video and I cut my, cut my face all here and it's being a little bit, you know, itchy when you do it. Let me put myself on the... Middle of the screen to not interrupt the Reddit too much. Okay, so this this stuff is revealed. Okay, so yeah, so there's new stuff coming up. Raid gave us a brief. I didn't even read it yet, but I know there's some timelines when you can talk about it. So I I didn't do it at the start of the video. But okay, I guess we're getting some kind of Nordic themed new champions, kind of like the Rattalos ones. I hope hope one of them. The guaranteed one is a good nuker for Arena, but we'll see about that. What? Oh really, I'm, I'm making a game with a mythological guards. It's different market from Raid Shadow Legends. Oh, okay. <laughs> about the new event, I guess, okay. It's kind of weird. Finland didn't exactly have like a religion, but we definitely had like gods and mythology, but not like an organized religion. Well, one of the Finnish gods, or literally the main god. He's like a dude in English, let's say. He's called Ukko, and that's like a manly way to say guy in Finnish. I don't want to go with you, GK, but I guess we're going to do it. He could still pick it, but he's probably going to pick Revive. I guess Finnish, um, Finnish mythology is maybe more similar to, let's say, like some... Asian countries like maybe Japan where they are like or China and so on where they are very you know they have mythology and guards and they are very um what's the word they think about luck and karma and that kind of stuff but they don't have like a specific religion that revolves around those kind of things and even the non-religious people believe in like bad luck and karma and those kind of mythology Finland is kind of the same way. I mean, nowadays Finnish people are pretty um, 
like non-religious, but the old Finnish um, mythology does have like lots of gods, but no religion that worships them. And like when we go fishing, we sometimes say some kind of you know <laughs> poems, I guess, for the gods about fishing, like you know, on Ahti Ahvenia and that kind of stuff. Ahti is like the fish god or the sea god or whatever. And you ask him for a fish when you when you start fishing. I don't think everybody does that, and I, I don't think my family does it super seriously, but I think that's kind of, you know, folklore stuff. My, my grandmother used to say those kind of poems a little bit too. But there you go, now you know. The main god of Finland is called Dude. Oh yeah, I need to move myself. I don't know, it, it could be kind of okay if I was in the middle, but uh, for live arena it's better if I'm at the side. I'm curious, are you guys very religious? Because I think, you know, the people that watch my videos are on average surprisingly old. No offense to anybody, but my audience is significantly older than me. I'm not, I'm not like in my teens or anything like that. I think probably, probably could be that a good amount of people watching my videos might be religious. I'm not really super religious myself, but I'm kind of years past my like atheist phase where I was super super keen on debating with people about that. I think I mentioned it in the videos before, but it's kind of ironic and funny thing that in Finland they have this thing called Rippikolu. You probably have it in other countries in Christianity too, but I don't know what's the name of it in English. But it's basically this camp where you go when you're like 15 and it's like everybody does it. Like it doesn't matter if you're religious or that kind of stuff. Basically nobody in my last, but I don't think anybody was religious. Maybe, maybe somebody's parent was religious, but nobody was religious at all. But everybody, literally everybody went there and there's, there's a big deal. Children like it and you choose which one you go. Like I, I went to one that was, uh, near like a ski resort and we went to ski there and it was during winter somebody else might have gone to a Rippikolu in like um in some island and they were fishing and that kind of stuff and then you mostly just you know act like children and do stuff and especially like I'm gonna tell you about in a second since I I was actually as a tutor in those later on but it's basically you know those things that Children are having fun and playing games, then then they kind of preach you about religion and you have some courses, but it's not a lot, it's maybe like once a day you you talk about it and you end the day with like some church. But regardless if you're religious or not, people generally like them. And then you know, you're children, so people are like, you know, talking about like stuff that 15 years old old would talk about, like I can tell you that there's a lot of like, you know, at least in Finland, in my experience, there's a lot of, you know, hormones going around, people are confessing or that kind of stuff. And it's just a fun, fun, you know, like growing up ritual here in Finland. And when I went there, I had never thought about religion basically at all. I didn't really have any stance about religion. And then when we were there, I think it lasted for maybe like eight days or something like that. I basically realized that I'm not religious. And I don't really believe in that stuff and I'm atheist. And but I had super fun time there and like I liked all of the, you know, the um, I don't know what you call it in English. Cantori. Like the one that does all of the music in a church. Like I I like that person. Um Dude, I can almost Oh uh, Ayavist. That that was the name of my cantori. It was called Ayavist. Um I got along with all of them super well and they like at the end of the like camp 
they asked us about what we think about religion and God and so on. And I literally told them that I don't really believe it in that stuff. And I'm more, you know, I, I guess I had thought, thought about politics before that, but not really like religion. And I knew I was like, you know, humanist, let's say. And I was, you know, <laughs> saying, saying to them as like a 15 year, year old kid acting smart that I'm like a humanist hedonist and I'm not really like a religious person. But after that, I had super good time there. And then I like, you know, I went in a course in the like local church so I could be like, you know, a tutor or like, um, I don't know what you call it in English, like a guide or tutor. Ba basically, I was working in those camps when I was like a couple years older than the other people, even though I knew I, I was not religious and all of the staff knew that I was not religious. And I went, I went into multiple of those camps. I think maybe like three or four I went as like a job. And I had super fun time there, so I think, um, yeah, th th that sums up the like Finnish religion that they didn't care if I was r religious or not. They still let me like be in those camps. It, it was kind of fun. But after that, I used to like I looked more into it, and I was kind of you know I had my neck beard days like many people had in those times in on the internet. Let's say like 15 years ago. But after that, I grew out of it eventually. I, I don't really, you know, I'm not like a believer in gods or God, but I really like the mythology. Like all of my favorite uh, books and, you know, games, mangas, animes, they are often revolving around like gods. I, I really like them. Like for instance, there's, I guess there's multiple ones. There's a... Uh, What's it called? There's this one book that I read maybe like four or five years ago called... Um, like it's translated from, I think, Chinese, so it's the name could, could be something different, but I think it's called Warlock in a Mage World. And it's basically about... It's like a super, super long book. <laughs> it's a ridiculously long book, like a Bible. But basically it's revolving around a guy who eventually becomes a god. And it's a super interesting story. And there's another one called The Legendary Mechanic. And it's kind of similar thing that it's kind of, you know, more on like a game world than the other one. The other one is like on a very like dark fantasy magic world. Legendary Mechanic is in like a game world or um, not game world, but let's say like gamified uh, world, like fantasy, fantasy game world. And then he eventually becomes a god or it's like um a long goal of like every you know like martial martial artist in that uh, in that story that if they become good enough they become a god and the main character eventually becomes a god. I think that's maybe like you know a Chinese thing because I have read a lot of Korean and Chinese fantasy books and I guess they like the them thematics of god as well because they often have like many gods and everybody can become not everybody but Anybody can become a god if they if they become strong enough in fighting or like magic or something like that. Anyway, let's concentrate. Staldus. I guess we have to pick both of them anyway. But yeah, I'm not, you know. Religious, but I'm super into the mythology and God store. Let's put it that way. One thing that I find kind of interesting, that maybe it's, you know, a Christian thing and I'm like Europe and Western, so that's why we think it from that perspective. But I don't know why people always, uh, not everybody, but I guess in West mostly, people always think that there's one God and they don't really think that there will be many gods. I used to think of a lot about the guard stuff when I when I cared more about that and I always thought that it would if there was a god I think it would make sense that then there would be many guards and why would there be just one god if if it's possible but I, I'm not like you know a, a religious debater so I'm sure there's good arguments uh, against that 
but in in those books they they often have you know like the guards are kind of like the greek pantheon that they are like fighting with each other and plotting and making alliances and they are more maybe human like than the christian god but there's like many gods and they are not like you know neutral robots let's say i i guess that's what people in the west generally consider the christian god to be that it's not like a human and it doesn't think emotionally and it's about humanity but the greek pantheon and i guess the chinese mythology and the asian mythology is not that way anyway i i, I guess i guess um in relation to the reddit post about the about the guards. By the way, if anybody is like into um, into that kind of stuff, I recommend the book uh, Warlock of the Mage World. It's a super interesting one. It's a super long one though, so don't think that you can read it in like a month or two. If you read like multiple hours every day, it's still gonna take you months to read it. But it, it was a very good one. No, I don't want to spoil it, but I think the issue with those kind of super long epic books, I have read multiple of those, the ending kind of often leaves you wanting for more story, and I kind of have the same opinion about that book. That they, they could have made a second book after the ending, but they didn't. But it, it's a super long one, and the story... I don't remember exactly because it's many years ago when I read it, but the story, like the time span that happens during the story is like thousands of years because the main character literally becomes a god and he doesn't have like a lifespan. So like he has children and his children have children and so on. It's a, it's a super long epic story. And you know, it's kind of, you know, like he starts out from scratch, he's just a nobody and he wants to become something and he eventually becomes better and better and so on. Those are the good upsides on the internet that books like that because I mean I used to read like you know western fantasy novels but when I got a little bit older I more like the Asian ones. Like when I was like teenager or young adult, I used to read a lot of Western fantasy, but then I switched it to like Asian fantasy. And a lot of those books are either fan translated or they are translated because like people on the internet paid for it <laughs> to happen. And those kind of things wouldn't have happened before internet. I could have never read those like Chinese or Korean books and so on. And the funny thing, okay, now I'm getting super into the books, but the funny thing is that one thing that I've noticed that the Asian people like to do, I, I guess it's Chinese thing mainly, and that doesn't apply just to books, but everything in real life too, but they often like to, you know, copy things from other stuff. And if somebody makes a good book, then somebody makes like their own version of that book. And I also read a book that is um, basically like a copy of that book, but I don't recall what's the name of that one anymore. I remember the main character was called Grim, but I don't recall what the name of the book is anymore. Some, something about mages too, but... Oh, no, no, that book was called Age of Adepts. Yeah, that's the one. But the, the main book or the first book is a lot longer than Age of Adepts. Anyway. Spe speaking of... <laughs> speaking of, like, uh, theology, we are meeting the... Meeting the axis of evil here. He has everything that I hate that my enemies could pick.
Should I go with Wukong and Rotos just to get more Polymorph? I think we need to, because otherwise we're not gonna have any Polymorph and how could we ever beat this team? But, I mean, he, he's gonna ban the Armands, of course, and we don't have Polymorph on Ankara or Narsus. So if I win, let's say, with like Staltus and Necrot, then we wouldn't have anything. And if I didn't go with Rotos, then I probably wouldn't have picked Wukong either, since he has the UDK, but we, we have to do it. Oh, he doesn't have a lockout. I guess it's possible that we could go for UDK ban here. That kind of makes it a lot more plausible for us to win it. Maybe. It still looks very tough, though. Even though, you know, I have spoken, I've been very vocal about it that I, I want to get nerfs, but I'm sure Harima and Marius are not gonna get nerfed, and it's not like there's champions that don't work against them, but. I don't have those options. I think we should gamble again and actually open with the A3. Right? Now let's open with the A2 on Harima. Oh fuck, I was too slow. Okay. The A3 would be good if we stole the stone skin, but we didn't. Okay, this is kind of good. We could we could revive it and do it again, but should I go for that though? No, probably not. I mean, it's gonna kill the other stuff. But M Marius is not like um, he's frozen right now, so he's not gonna counter attack. If I were to do the anchor revive and get turn meter manipulation. Oh, the CV is low. I guess we can kill it with the A3. Damn, 61k damage. And often it does like 300k damage. Oh, I think I think Mika K is just gonna kill my Narcissus. I don't think he can survive this, but. We can revive it, so that's not actually bad. We can then kill everybody but Harma. Oh fuck. If we revive it, no, though, we might get enfeeble. I hope we don't. We win it if we don't- ah, if we don't get it, but of course we did. God damn it, god damn it. But please don't give it to us a second time. Hmm. Ah uh, and I don't I don't have any polymorph alive right now, so Marius is such a pain to deal with. In case it isn't obvious, you, you definitely... Oh, maybe I could have killed it if I did the A3 there. I didn't think I would do that much dam damage with the Wicked, but... You definitely want to gear your Marius fast, because... If you can out-rotate enemy nukers, they might never get a turn, so... It is very big deal on him. I, I wouldn't go... Especially on him, I wouldn't go full damage and... I will focus a lot on the speed. Okay, we're safe. 
close battle, very hard one. We totally could have lost it, but I think we're even now, are, are we not? No, we, we have like one more win. Okay, nice. Trading some win streaks. Oh, biohack. What? This is like, you know, this is not a great time for a biohack. It's like 11 a.m. for me, so I guess I guess he's running late today. I think the prime time for him to play is maybe like 10 hours ago. No, not at this time, so it's gonna be like in the middle of the night to him, like starting to get morning at this point. Uh, he, he's definitely gonna go with the Marius, I'm sure, so... Do I want to go with the... Narthus Angora, because we might not get a lot polymorph if I do this. Let's go with... Um, he does like the big Grixia, though. Hmm. Now, let, let's go with this. Uh, I was thinking about switching Angora to Duchess, but now let, let's do this. Okay, I'll go with both of them. I mean, I definitely need to get the Duchess here. And probably Wukong too. I, yeah, I think we're gonna go with Wukong as well. And I guess he'll pick Sifi and Watnooker. No Galatir or Krixia in this battle. Or... You could maybe even go with double lookout and nuker. Okay, he, yeah, okay, he went with Kaja and Stavos. Interesting. Uh, I don't think Senna makes any sense here, so I think we're still definitely gonna go with Trotos. We we might polymorph his nukers and so on, so we have to go with that. I don't think Biohack has Harima, does he? Okay, I got lucky there, my Narthus. Resisted the lockout, didn't get any feeble. Oh, got stunned by the. Wait, wait. Wait. No, he's still gonna take a turn turn before us. Right? Can I get a turn on Narcissus before Marius? No, Marius is definitely gonna go first. I think Marius is gonna kill the Narcissus. If Narcissus gets a turn here, that would be great. Oh, okay. Both of the Nukers are gonna go first. Oh, and, and we got the enfeeble. Okay. You didn't even get the turn there. <laughs> Damn, I think I was like on win streak against him, but now it's gone. Can, can we get him instantly again? Okay, no. This avatar is kind of cool. I see a lot of people using it. I have no idea from what tier in the CHS they give you that. <laughs> it's kind of a funny thing that. I mean, avatar, avatars doesn't matter at all, to be fair, but people want to get all of the seeds avatars, and you can only get them from specific tiers, and people keep complaining about that, and I haven't seen Plarium saying that they're gonna do something about it. I, I'm not sure if, they're, if they are ever gonna do anything about it. We kind of accidentally are getting all of the avatars, because we switched the clan to get easier battles in Hydra. And we, we were on tier 6 in the first battle, but now we're <laughs> starting from the scratch. I don't know if we're gonna skip multiple uh, leagues now or if we're instantly gonna go to the highest rank. I, I don't think in the last seeds we lost a single battle in defense, so we kind of had an unfair matchup against the enemy. Yeah, pretty sure at least the last time I checked it, 
which was maybe like a couple hour, hours before. I don't think we lost a single battle in, in defense. I think we're, we're gonna go with the Wukong again. <laughs> I'm picking, picking Wukong today in every battle. We could have gone with Mikake, I was kind of in between which one I want to pick. But let's go with Wukong. The good thing about Wukong is that we can polymorph their Nukers through Stone Skin, and that's kind of a big deal. Oh, he got the Rotos. Stalos, or I, I guess we'll go with Stalos this time. Xena didn't do that well so far. Well, Xena does have the lightning gauge. Now that um, Hell Hades was talking about the, the new dungeon, I guess it's open season to talk about it. I hope it's a dungeon for... Um, for uh, I, it's, it's definitely not, but I wish it was something that you can you can get blessings or more, more tokens to buy them from. But I, I'm sure it's not. If they just doubled Double the chance that, or not the chance, but the amount of materials you get to upgrade champions. Right now it's like one in every eight months if you play actively. If it was like one in every four months and you could make like three champions per year, I think that would be reasonable. That way, if you're in game player, you can actually get some champions that you pulled that year, possibly to the highest rank during, during the same one. but. It's not super feasible right now. Oh, he instantly switched the form. O often they stay in the first form for one turn. Also, the Wukong is not locked out, so he can still steal some stuff from the enemy team. Oh, he really doesn't want to get the blockbuster step off on the Marius. I hope we go. Okay, okay. Should I do it? If I revive it, I, yeah, I should definitely. If I revive it now, then surely we're gonna go first. Oh, they resisted it and we got any people. Okay, that was the biggest, biggest mistake ever. I think Marius would have gone before my Saldos, but that wasn't a good idea. Yeah, we, we can't do anything with Polymorph, so I, I think we, we we lost the battle because of that revive. Almost killed the Lazarus. Oh, wait, wait. Can we... I think he can survive enough to get one more turn. Yeah, M Marius is not gonna one-shot it, I don't think, with that shield. I don't think we can... Oh, okay, never mind. <laughs> he got the cooldowns back. Okay, it's game over. He didn't even have Harima and we lost it. That kind of sucks. I think we're one. We're trading the wins and 
lost streaks back and forth, but I think we're one battle down at this point. Let me just show you. I'm still, I'm lacking behind. It's kind of embarrassing, but it's still gonna take me a while to get Marius. Oh, against Timo. I was gonna say something, but may maybe I don't say it. <laughs> Never mind. Nothing bad, but probably he wouldn't want me to say it. It, w it wasn't any ne anything negative or anything like that. Okay, Narsus and Sifi. <laughs> if I go with like Rodos and uh, Angora, he's for sure gonna pick UDK, but I guess we're gonna go with that and I'll just go with the Wukong again. He probably has resistance Wukong though, but if he picks UDK or if he picks like triple lockout, I don't know, like, or like double lockout, I don't know if like both is bad, so I don't know if it really matters. Okay, we got that, and... Wukong and Stalthus, I guess. Almost could go with Heligat. <laughs> oh wait, what? Not, not Guardian, Wukong. But the thing is that I know he has Lazarus, and even if I don't pick Heligat, I think he's very likely to pick it. But I think we're still gonna go with it, but he's for sure gonna pick Lazarus if we go with Heligat. But we do have the Angora though, so I think we'll give it a go. Maybe he doesn't know my builds and he thinks it's like a support Helicat and a Nuke Wukong. That might confuse him a little bit. Yeah, he of course he had the Lazarus and we still want to ban the um, Galatir. <laughs> I, I was gonna say Galares, but no Galatir. So yeah, I, I knew he was gonna, gonna get the Lazarus. Obviously at this point, you know, he knows how to play the game, so it is kind of easy to predict what he does in that situation. He did the right thing. But maybe maybe Wukong gets some Polymorph procs or Protoss. Maybe we can claim the Blockbuster step off in a good time. Maybe it's not totally lost yet. Okay, Wukong cut in. But yeah, maybe he doesn't know that I have Wukong in Supersonic build. I think he was expecting the Lazarus to go first, and I'm sure he has insanely fast Lazarus, but because of all of those buffs we cut in. And this is actually kind of good. Now it's super bad for him. Rodos can instantly try to do a little bit damage on the R base, and we can start the battle. Would be super funny if we can win against Timo, but not the, not not the other people that have like way worse accounts than him. It's kind of funny how it goes, but this is not like this battle is winnable. Funnily enough, even, even though some of those other battles were not. I don't think we're like um, we're gonna win this for sure, but it's totally possible. What should I do? Sifi or Lazarus? I think we go for the Sifi, and that way she will be lower held. It's not like we can't kill the Lazarus. Goddamn Lazarus passive though. Oh fuck. Wukong got polymorph. That's not. I mean, not polymorph. Wukong got block revived. It's game over for him. But can we. Can Rotos do his thing? He doesn't have the. Rotos is. Oh, he's gonna get the block revived. Rotos might get petrified, but we now have a kind of, you know. It's possible to kill him. I think we need to open on that 
in our arses. I hope we have enough damage. Might not be enough without block damage, but oh yeah, yeah it, it is okay. We, I mean, without attack buff, but yeah, it was okay, good. I know we didn't kill anybody, but I didn't want them to take turns, so I did it that way. Now, if oh, okay, that was smart of him. I was gonna say that if he does the AOV note, then Rotos is gonna get extra turn, but on purpose he didn't do that. I don't know if my Rotos can survive the Narsus Nook. He, d he has lost some... Okay, nice. He has lost some health, but it's still kind of close. And we need to go for the... Tiffy, I guess? Wait, does he have the revive on it? I feel like he did use it, but I'm not even 100% sure. Oh, what? I okay, I think we won. I, I didn't expect to get the extra turn, so I, I think we're good. Uh, I, I I think if we win this this might okay let's let's not say yet that we won but if we do win this 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 might be one of those battles that ends up in thumbnail <laughs> I did that couple times recently yeah I think that's gonna be the thumbnail I I'm sorry Timo but I think we're we're gonna go with that <laughs> let me take a screenshot of it right now I already know that I'm gonna put that in thumbnail so might might as well. <laughs> It's a little bit cringe, and I I don't put them every time. But I kind of thought about it. I mean, it's not like I had have not like defeated like strong accounts many many times before, like dozens and dozens of times. And I also lose like like you know accounts that are not that good at all. But I haven't been using them in thumbnails, and you know that's the name of the game on the YouTube. So I might as well be smart about it and do it properly. So. <laughs> Let's save that picture and probably gonna use it in the, in the thumbnail. I kind of have a template for that because I used it a couple times already. Loki. This guy might be Finnish. Like his name sounds Finnish. Loki is Seagull in Finnish. Wait, 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 fuck. <laughs> I almost speak Narcissus. Okay, I'm... I, I was thinking about other things too much. Yeah, Armands, of course. There's a... Uh, okay, let me find this channel. There's this one YouTube channel that I'm very big fan about. I can't recall its name out of the top of my head, but it's like a Australian animator, and it's, you know, it's a little bit adult humor, but he does super funny animated videos. <laughs> and he has one video series about, uh, not not Seagull, but Steven Seagull. <laughs> Let me find it. It's It might not be for everybody, because he does, you know, kind of, you know, adult-themed humor, but I'm sure many people do like it, though. Um... I think we we'll go with the Wugong in, instead of the Datsus because of the R base. Again, it does seem like Wugong is very good in the R base matchup. Okay, let me see if I can find it. Ah, god damn it, I can't. <laughs> When I when I search in YouTube Steven Seagull, you, you find lots of other things, not not, not the one, one that I'm thinking about. God damn it! Ah, uh, fuck. What's the name of the channel? This is not like a small channel. I, I'm talking about kind of a big one actually. Okay, never mind. He ha he has another video series called Met Orcs. I'm sure if I. <laughs> If I type Met Orcs, it's not possible to find anything other than his channel. Okay, this is the guy that I'm talking about. It's a channel called Greasy Tales. I think it used to be used to have a different name back in the day that is non-YouTube friendly. But um where is it? Uh Okay, wait. I'll find it off screen. By the way, this is a super good channel. I, 
I recommend you to look it up. I if you are into that kind of stuff, but you might gi give it a go. He has some, you know, very weird videos, let's say, that <laughs> you're not really gonna find anywhere. Like, he has some... What's the name of that one actor? I totally forget its name. The one that is in 24. I think it's that actor. He has like... A oh, yeah, th I think that... that uh, that video's name is something like Bruce Wizard, and he's like a teacher in like, you know, like, like Harry Potter style of wizard school. And then somebody's, you know, it's like a very trippy video. Somebody's uh, saying that he's like a scammer and he doesn't actually know how to do magic. And then he's kind of, you know, getting sad about it. And then he like flies inside his hat. And then, then I think, you know, Benjamin Franklin comes out from like, hundred dollar bill or something like that to rescue him. It's super trippy weird videos, but I recommend it. Oh, okay, now, now I found it. The, sh the show that I'm talking about with uh, Steven Seagal is called Great Destiny Man. A and that's, you know, Great Destiny Man is the see Steven Seagal. I I'll show it after this battle. But I'm not gonna watch it on the video, but I'll show you the videos. Anyway, this guy is kind of, you know, not giving me any turns, so I can just talk about other stuff. We're like two minutes in and haven't, haven't really been able to do anything at all. It is what it is. I really, I really wish I would pull Angora because it would be kind of useful to lock out, like, uh, not lock out, unlock out myself against these types of teams. Oh, what? We got a turn? I don't think we can kill the Sifu though. It doesn't have a shield. Maybe I, maybe I was tanky enough, I guess. Th this guy might not have the most, um, best nuke here on Lazarus. So some of the people can kind of one-shot me, but of course it's RNG. Damn. I think if I don't... I think Angora is going to die now if I don't revive Rotos, but Rotos is not going to take a turn before Lazarus, and I kind of would want to revive the Narsus instead of Rotos, but I think we still lost it. I think it's over. Yeah, the thing is that even though it kind of might look like maybe I should have just saved the revive on Narsus, but if I didn't revive Rotos, he would have killed the Ankara. We, we had to do this. Wait. He doesn't have taunt. Rotos gets a turn. We got it. Yeah, okay. Damn, that was a very close one, but we got it just barely at the end. Even after I waited for like two minutes to get my first turn. Anyway, here here's the video. It's a channel called uh, uh, Greasy Tales, and the video series I'm talking about is Great Destiny Man. He has multiple videos on the same series. It's a very good one, kind of old, but I think he did a Great Destiny Man maybe like semi recent. Maybe it's like a year or a couple of years old. As you can see, he does kind of, kind of weird stuff, but it's it, it, it's good. Prince of Vibes is a very good video too. He makes very trippy and kind of you know, as you can see, a little bit, uh, like sexual or odd videos. I think his name used to be actually Sexual Lobster or something like that years ago. This, this is one of my favorite channels on YouTube. In case, in case you want to know, I'm kind of you know, I have been following YouTube for a long time. I think this is a pretty old channel, actually. I don't think he makes videos very often. Yeah, and this is kind of... Oh, this is the video that I was talking about, Bruce Wizard. He is a very unique and weird channel, w one of my favorites. W when is his oldest video? Okay, it is like super... Yeah, like 18 years ago. Holy moly, wait, 18 years ago? That's, that's before Google bought YouTube. I think Google bought YouTube on 2007, I think. 
that might like literally be before it. But yeah, uh, this is a very good channel. <laughs> if you have not heard about it, it might not be for everybody. Somebody might be offended by his <laughs> weird jokes and sexual stuff. Not all of the videos are like that, but a lot of them have kind of weird, weird things like that, like you can see there. But yeah, check check it out. The, the Met Orcs, which is his new series, is kind of good too. I, I like that one as well. Oh, we only have seven minutes left. T time time flew by doing live arena. I think this might be the last battle of the day. Don't think we really gained a lot of points, but we gained some experience, I guess. We did get the Timo win, even though it's totally meaningless and doesn't mean anything, but we did get that, so it's something nice, I guess. Now that I think about it, though, I, I, don't, I don't think those videos where I... I think I did it twice that I had like a win of like some big account on the thumbnail. I don't think either one of those videos did, you know, better than average. I think they both probably did worse than average, so... But I'm still definitely gonna use it, though. I mean, not, not like I haven't beaten him before or, or anything like that. It's not the first time. Uh, I think we go with Duchess and Narsus instead of Angora. Need the Polymorph. I'm kind of creeping in to the 6 star Polymorph on Narsus. Maybe I'm, if I'm lucky I'll get it before the end of this year. If I do get that then I think that would actually be fairly impactful because I pretty much pick Narsus in almost every single battle. Like, if they don't pick it, I'm always going to pick Narsus, and that might change in the future if I get more good champions, but for now, I'm always gonna pick it. Okay, th this guy is thinking as long as I, I stand to. Okay, and he still went with Sifia and Harima. I don't know if you needed to really think about that too long, to be honest. And we're, we're still gonna go with the usual. Just that this time we have a lot polymorph, even if the Armands gets of course banned, but we're still gonna have polymorph. UDK or Warlord ban, which one should I go for? I could Alternatively, almost even go for CP, but Wukong is gonna get locked out. I think we're gonna go with one of these two. I think we'll go with the Warlord ban, because we do have the Polymorph. He has a plus for UDK, so I think it's very likely that he's gonna resist it. Especially since he doesn't have a speed aura, he's definitely gonna have the resistance aura from CP. What? You went with, with um, Marius? Maybe it's not resistance build UDK then. Okay. I think I can I can polymorph it. I don't think he would have gone with this if he had a resistance UDK. In general, I think most people know it, but I don't really value like HP and attack aura super highly or defense generally you want to go with speed aura or resistance aura if you use it but in this situation i definitely would have used resistance aura if i was him oh okay <laughs> never mind I, I got super happy but maybe he had like 900 resistance udk and he, he knew that it was enough ne never mind To be fair, I have my Wukong in Supersonic, so I could have him a lot more accuracy than he is. Maybe he knows it and that's why he knew that he doesn't need more resistance.
this complicates things, but we can still get polymorphs and hopefully... Okay, <laughs> that's not the champion I need to get polymorphs on, but hopefully Wukong can remove the defense buffs and we can prolong the fight as long as possible and... Ah, fuck. Counted. If we do that, then we're eventually get, gonna get polymorphs and Jens and Rotos. But okay, now, it, now it's looking kind of bad. I wish uh, UDK didn't get the town there on Wukong. It's not 100% chance, I think it's 50 or something like that. And it could have weak hit too, so... It was very unlucky that he landed the taunt. Okay, it's over. Fuck. I guess that means that we have time for one more battle though. Well, if you're having a bad session, then then I hope my pain helps you cope with the losses too. I definitely definitely need to do some coping. I, I hate losing and I hate losing when I feel like, you know, the odds are against me and I can't really outplay them in the big phase. Or... I can't, I mean like, that there's like no possibility to do it, because, you know, there, there, <laughs> there's not too many options to pick from. Uh, after this video I'm gonna go to the grocery store, but I've been doing this thing, you probably can't see it on the videos, but I'm trying to, you know, get a little bit more fit. I used to be super fit most of my life, and in the last couple of years I basically have done no exercise. It's not like I'm fat per se, I mean, I could be... I, I have some belly that I could totally lose, but my um, my conditioning is not very good. I, I will not be a strong champion in raid. Like, I run 100, 100 uh, meters and I'm done, that's pretty much where I'm at. I used to be pretty okay at running. Um, I'm just gonna walk to grocery store and I'm not even gonna pick the closest one. That's I've been doing that for a while actually, like I think last three weeks. And I was planning to do it until the end of the... Um, not even the end of the summer, but until it's like snow, because then I can't really go the, um, go the forest road that I go. It's, it, like, it's basically like a jogging road that I'm going. But okay, until then, I'm just gonna walk to the shop every time, and it's like three kilometers, so it's not the biggest walk or jog or whatever. But I'm I'm only gonna do that. I'm never gonna go by car to the <laughs> to the shop, and I'm gonna force myself to do some exercising. Maybe maybe that will change a little bit after the summer, though, because um, I might. Uh, there's I don't want to say what I do on my day daytime but uh um I'm probably gonna go to shop sometimes on my way to home because there's a very big store where I'm usually asked during during the day so okay do your worst Let, let's see the let's see the UDK Okay, there you go. I mean, people kind of know what I'm doing generally anyway, but I guess I I shouldn't say it to, like all the time because, you know, wh why would I do it? Probably shouldn't mention all the time, you know, too much personal information. I actually meant, not meant, I meant one time a guy who knew me that is like um not finnish but exchange student that that plays raid that that knew me that happened once but just once so far it, it makes sense because i make videos in english so i i guess it's not that surprising And, you know, 
the, the, that guy was very you know professional i think he was uh i think he was actually i think he was studying physics or something like that i want to say physics but he he was some kind of uh nerd let's say i'm pretty sure he was studying physics i i think he quit the rain so he's not gonna see this video but if he does then i apologize He, he's Indian, so you know, it's kind of, you know, stereotypical. But yeah, you you know, we had the same matchup multiple times today. I think from this guy and other guys too, it is a very, very rough matchup for me. It's not impossible, but we need some iron sheet to beat it. And I don't, I don't have any answer to this. <laughs> I need to just get Marius and then I can be big it myself. Th that would be better. Let's see, how much polymorph does this guy? He only has two champions in it, so maybe... Maybe Marius could be very annoying against him as well. And I think when I get to Marius, I think it's going to be kind of decent combo with my Duchess. Because my Duchess is very tanky. And I don't have champions that put out the defense buff. And since Marius does do it, I don't know if I should revive it. I mean, Rodos is just going to die before he gets done. If... um. What was I gonna say? Yeah, if, if Marius puts the defense buff on my Duchess and she's super tanky, like 160k HP, and gets healing for Immortal and reach, Regen, so she does have a good amount of self-healing, maybe that will make the difference in some battles. I mean, I'm still gonna get, you know, locked out, so I'm sure it's not gonna be as rosy in practice as I think in my head, but I think it probably will be useful. Okay, please, no. Okay, of course we got Enfeeble. And the cleanse is on the cooldown now, so we can do it. And by the time the Enfeeble ends, we're, we're gonna get instant lockout and, and turn meter reduction. Damn. We, we could end it here if we didn't get the Enfeeble box. I mean, I, I wouldn't one shot Duchess, but I would kill the Warlord and Marius, and it would basically be game over. But now it's still, you know, probably still gonna lose. Little bit too my wives today. <laughs> Rats used to be, you know, sometimes hyper positive and very, you know, like, t let's say team player, like lifting other people up and and that kind of stuff. And then, then sometimes he's like super negative. <laughs> and I was ca always calling Rats a doomer. Because he often gave out those Doomer vibes. And I guess I'm being a bit Doomer at this point too. Just losing, you know, with the exact same team like five times during one session. Knowing that you can't do anything about it. It's a little bit, you know, takes a toll. <laughs> takes a toll. Half. Dude, if I didn't have the Enfeeble, I could do some nice things. I, I could have done on the last two turns of Narsus, and Rodos is gonna die before before he even gets a turn. Fuck. Painful. Can I um can I pull a revive on Duchess? Then Rotos at least would maybe get a turn and um, would have his cooldowns back. Oh, wait. wait. The Warlord has defense buff and Harima is up too. I don't think we can kill it now though. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Damn, we could even kill the Marius. But both of those things definitely do add up. We, we had two turns where he didn't have either one of those things, but we had Enfeeble on Marius. Now when we had it, we, we couldn't do anything. Okay. It's a loss. Kind of, you know, sad. 
doesn't feel fair, but I'm I'm sure there's people that I battle that fe feel like I have two good champions too. Maybe not recent, but in the past at least. I want to see how many people we, we fought with that team. Like, you know, so many people use the same one. I, I guess we are. I guess we banned it in the some of the battles though, but yeah. Not not, not Marius, but I think I, I banned Harima twice, was it? Maybe. But yeah, I, wait, I think we still gained. It's kind of funny system because and if, even if you do bad and you lose battles, you still gain points. I feel like we were, I think we still maybe gained like 20 points or something like that. Not a lot, but a little bit. Anyway, that's it. Have a lovely day. Hope you're not depressed by my Doomer vibes and see ya.